Okay, we've seen that the standard basis for M22 is this. And if these vectors are V1, V2, V3, V4, then since M22 consists of all matrices of the form A, B, C, D, where A, B, C, and D are real numbers, then uh, it's easy to get any matrix of that form. You just multiply A times V1, which is A times this, and you'll get the A here. V, V2 is going to give you the B here, uh, and so forth. And we've seen all that. Now, we want to imitate this uh, uh, for M33. What's the standard basis for M33? Well, and you probably looked at it, but you should be able to list that standard basis. You should be able to visualize it in your head. Um, and you should actually know it at this point because it's been assigned. But, um, <coughs> so here we have it. Okay, and it's, I think, self explanatory. We just have a one in each possible position, zeros everywhere else. There are nine possible positions, so there are nine of these. Uh, and we could write M33 in set notation as a set of matrices A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33, where the A, I, J are real, I running from 1 to 3, J running from 1 to 3. Okay? Now I from 1 to 3, J from 1 to 3 covers every possible subscript we have here. So that the A, I, J for all those possible subscripts are all real. Um, okay. Now, we want to get to symmetric matrices. So what does a symmetric matrix in M33 look like? What's the basis for the set of symmetric matrices? Well, let's remember that for the 2 by 2 symmetric matrices, we said the form of a matrix has to be A, B, B, D. And it, basically, these two numbers could be anything, but these two have to be the same. And we came up then with this basis. Okay. Uh, if we want to get an A here, and using a minimal number of ones, we just use a one here and everything else zeros, we get an A by doing A times this matrix. And if we want to get a D here, uh, we multiply, and it should be D uh, and B here. Wrote that down quickly. Okay, uh, we multiply D by this matrix, that'll give us a D here. So we get the D here. No matter what we do with any of these others, if we do A, V1, and D, V2, we get A here and D here. Then we have to get B here, so we better have a 1 here in this matrix. Uh, but if we have a 1 there, we have to have a 1 here because the matrix has to be symmetric and also because we've got to get the same thing here that we get here. So there we have it. Now, how do we do a 3 by 3 symmetric matrix? Well, um, the form... And I'm going to use letters rather than subscripts, just because it's easier to see if two letters are different. Uh, but the uh, letters would be, uh, we'll just say, let's let A, B, and C go along the diagonal. We don't have to follow the alphabet the way we did up here. Uh, so those could be anything, because these elements don't affect the symmetry. Okay, they're the same in the transpose matrix as they are in the original matrix. Now, you can convince yourself of that. Um, so, what do we have? Well, next letter, let, let's use letters D, E, F, G, and so forth. Okay, uh, so the next letter would be D. If we have D here and E here and F here, well, that tells us everything we need to know about the matrix because if we do the transpose, the first row becomes the first column of the transpose, but the matrix has to equal its transpose. And that means that you got to have, if you got a row A, D, E, you have to have a column A, D, E. And if you have a row D, B, F, you have to have a column. DBF. If you're specifically, if your second row is DBF, your second column has to be DBF. So we have to have F here. And of course, that matches up the Ds, matches up the Es, matches up the Fs. Okay. Now, a basis. Well.
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to borrow any symmetric matrix out of this basis. We know they'll be linearly independent. Um, so anything in this basis that's symmetric is going to work. Well, that would be this, this, and where to go this. So we start with these, um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Now there are other symmetric matrices we could use, but things will be simpler in a way you should understand if we use a minimum number of ones. And in the case of these matrices, we can get away with a single one in any, well, no, we can't. We couldn't get away with a single one here, could we? We needed two ones because these had to be equal, okay? Well, that kind of gives us a hint. Any one off the diagonal has to be matched by another one. So let's take a matrix. Uh, the first matrix that has a one off a diagonal is this one. Let's start this way. Okay, now that's a perfectly valid row. All we have to do, uh, that's our first row. We just have to make our first column equal to the first row, and we have a symmetric matrix. And then we can put zeros everywhere else. Okay, well there's a nice symmetric matrix. Try to think of another one. Stop and think until you can either think of another one or decide you just can't. Okay, well, okay, I'm going to base it on this row here, the 0, 0, 1. Now, to build this into a symmetric matrix, the minimal thing I have to do is have a first column that equals the first row. So here we go. And now I can put zeros everywhere else. Then what? Well, let's see. I could use this one, couldn't I? I got 0, 0, 1 here, and I don't have a matrix with a 0, 0, 1 in it. So let me do that. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now what do I need to make this symmetric? Well, I have to have a second column that's equal to the second row. So that means I'm going to have 0, 0, 1 for my second column, and now I complete my second row. Okay. Are there any other symmetric matrices with minimal numbers of 1s? Or do these matrices span the set of 3 by 3 symmetric matrices? Well, let's think about it. Okay. Can I get this matrix as a sum of these vectors? Now, I don't want to write them all out again. I'm just going to say this is a set V1, V2, through V6. There's six of them. Let's check it out and see if I can build this matrix out of these six vectors. Okay? So, and if I can, then I'll know that I have a basis because every vector has to be of this form. <coughs> now, to be formally sure, I should, I, I see that it spans. I also have to show that it's linearly independent, and I'll leave that to you. Um, okay, so here we have the matrix. How do I get this out of these? Well, I need an A here. The only way I'm going to get an A is multiply this one by A. So it's going to be A, and I'm just going to write V1. Okay. Then I need a D here. How am I going to get a D here? Well, the only place where I don't have a zero here is here. So that has to be V, v times V2. And of course, that also gives us the D here, because I've got the ones here. Well, you can check it out matrix by matrix. Um, And I don't know what I just did. I did B times V2. This is V2. This is V1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Then to get an E here, how do I get it? Well, 
This is the only place I've got anything but zero, so that's my only choice, and this had better work. So that would be E times V5. Uh, does that work? Well, gives me an E here. It also gives me an E down here, but that's what I have to have. Now I'm getting carried away here and ran over in the last one, so I better be careful. Okay. Then what? Well, I should let you complete it, but we'll go on. Okay, the D here is already taken care of. You know, I'm just not writing down the right letters. I said B times V2, but I just wasn't looking at what I'd written. This isn't B, this is D. Um, now, when I wrote BV2, that was okay, but that's not what I was doing, because we will have a BV2. Anyhow, uh, the DV4 gives us the Ds here and here, so we've got this D. Now we need a B here, and that's where I'll do BV2. I'd already written that, but that's not what I was talking about when I wrote it. Okay, then what? Then we need an F here. Well, the only place I've got a non-zero in that position is here, so that's F times V5, and then uh, we don't have a G, we have a C. 